Hello friends. So in the previous session, we have concluded our discussion on the differentially compound generator. All right. So with that, actually, we are concluding the DC machines mod uh, course as such. So I thought that uh, why should uh, why I should not make a conclusion video in which I will be just listing a brief summary of whatever we have discussed till now. So basically, you know that the course was divided into three structures. three areas one was dc machinery fundamentals and the other was dc motors and then it was dc generators so what did we see in dc machinery fundamentals the first lecture was about ports and uh, how uh, the dc motor dc generator and transformers etc are two port networks all right so they are having two ports to interact with the outside world all right so the motor as you know converts the electrical energy to mechanical energy and the generator converts mechanical energy to electrical energy and of course the transformer just converts electrical energy to electrical energy. then we went through the cross product and the faraday's law then we visited how a rotating loop in a magnetic field can produce a voltage induced voltage but then you found out that this voltage inside the loop was always an alternating current so how can we convert that alternating current into a direct current for that we introduced a device which is called a commutator which is found in a dc motor as well as a dc generator all right so in the generator it actually converts the ac into dc so that the brushes can collect them and uh, in the motor it converts the input a dc into an alternating current in the uh, armature or the rotating coil whatever you want to call it now then we went into the torque induced in a rotating loop so how much torque is getting induced in a uh, loop when you are supplying current to it all right then we saw the phenomenon of commutation see i told you that uh, the commutation is basically the reversal of current when the conductor moves from one pole to the other pole so then only the you are having the torque Uh, continuity so that the 360 degree rotation is possible if you don't have a commutator you will have only 180 degree rotation and then you will have the torque reversal so the commutator prevents that after that we went through the construction of dc machine in quite depth so we went through what is a yoke what is a pole and what is a commutator and all those things but the topic which we were covered in depth was the armature winding specifically lap winding in which we constructed the Uh, initially a crude diagram was constructed then we went for the more developed diagram and in the lap winding you found that that the number of parallel paths was equal to the number of poles and in the wave winding i have not taken the wave winding as such but wave winding once you understand all these thing it's very simple so you can do it on your own so this was what we got out of the uh, lap winding then we understood that there is there are some problems associated with the commutation that means the commutation is not as smooth as we explain in theory so basically the two problems here were armature reaction and the ldi by dt voltages all right so armature reaction itself produced two effects one is the shifting of the magnetic neutral plane and other was the flux weakening effect that means the, uh, the current due to the armature produces its own magnetic field and it has these two effects shifting of the magnetic neutral plane and the flux weakening effect this is also called as demagnetizing effect okay flux weakening is also called as demagnetizing effect after that what did we do after that we had a session on the solutions to all these problems that is how we can reduce armature reaction and how you can reduce this ldi by dt voltage so one of the solution was brush shifting which had to be manually done so you shift the brushes according to the new magnetic neutral plane so the magnetic neutral plane shifts with respect to the armature current so you take your brush and you shift it there and you take the voltage uh, from that point but you know that that is not a very good solution therefore you are having the concept of interpoles which will compensate for any ldi by dt voltages which is developing in the brush axis and other than that but interpoles does not uh, uh, reduce the flux weakening effect actually so for that you are having compensating winding therefore a combination of interpoles and compensating winding will make the commutation process much more efficient in a dc machine okay so then we found out the expression for the internal generated voltage for the ea it was k phi omega and then we found out the expression for torque induced which was k phi into ia and these two equations are the basis for any kind of analysis in dc motors and dc generators so finally in that dc machinery fundamentals module we went through the power flow in the dc machine so for motors and generators so if you learn one the other one is just the opposite all right so after that we went to the dc motors 
armed with these two equations to explain our concepts so basically any motor or any generator which i have taken are divided into four parts so first one was the equivalent circuit then the terminal characteristics then the non linear analysis of all these things and then depending upon whether it's a motor or a generator we had speed control or voltage control respectively so first one was the separately excited motor or the shunt and the shunt motor so unless or otherwise specifically mentioned specific this uh, separately excited motors and the shunt motors are having the same characteristic okay so as you know that the shunt motor what was the condition the <coughs> shunt winding was in parallel with the armature of the motor okay so this is the equivalent circuit now i'm not going in depth in all these things it will take a lot of space so i'll just plot the terminal characteristic so what was the terminal characteristic it is the plot between the output parameters of a machine so in case of a motor the output parameters are torque induced and omega so this is omega and this is torque induced so we found out that as the torque induced increases that means as the load increased so the speed had come down okay and based on this you had different methods of controlling speed and then we do the non linear analysis so forgot about that so non linear analysis was basically taking into considering the armature reaction and the flux weakening effects into our problems so each and every time i discussed the motor we did the theoretical analysis and we did a problem also to complement all those results so in speed control basically you are having for shunt motors the rf control exists okay and then the armature voltage control existed and then you are having the armature resistance control of course armature resistance control was a wasteful method because it uh, consumes a lot of power which dissipates as heat so mostly it was these two methods that we did and then the characteristics varied accordingly that you can see in the lectures so in the series motor <coughs> the series winding and the armature are connected in series like this so if this is the series winding and this is the armature so they were connected in series so the terminal characteristics were very interesting for this so this was omega and this was the torque induced and this was the terminal characteristic so it you can clearly see that the motor had a high starting torque but however under low load conditions that is when the torque induced it is small the motor tends to have a very high speed or we can tell that it goes into an over speed condition right so in speed control there is not uh, much method available for the series motor the only thing that you can do is control the terminal voltage or you can add ra uh, armature resistance control but that is not a good technique so the only uh, technique here was the armature voltage control we went through the non linear analysis for this also then you had the compound motors which have the combination of the series and the shunt winding so you had cumulatively compound and then you had the differentially compound so in the cumulatively compound motor both the series winding and the shunt winding actually were coupled in such a way that the magnetic fluxes produced by these two windings would actually be aiding each other that means the flux would increase with respect to current okay so <clears throat> you are getting both best out of the both worlds here so if this is the terminal characteristics i want to plot here so this was the say shunt generator okay and this was say the series generator now the cumulatively compound motor would produce a high starting torque as compared to a higher starting torque as compared to a shunt motor but it does not have this over speeding uh, problem as seen in the series motor so its characteristic will lie something like this something like this it will be okay so you get the uh, best of two worlds okay speed controls is same as what you see in the shunt motor so i am not putting that here then you saw we discussed something about the differentially compound motor so what was the differentially compound motor in this what happened was that the currents all right the windings are connected in such a way that the magnetic effects that they produce are opposing to each other so in fa the flux actually <coughs> reduces with respect to the current okay so this motor did not have any specific application because the voltage torque current characteristics are quite poor because as the torque induced the motor had a tendency to uh, go to a over speeding condition the only reason why we studied it was because a cumulatively compound generator okay if it undergoes a power flow reversal 
that means rather than giving power it takes in power it becomes a differentially compound motor therefore understanding the characteristics well it will be a little bit important for us okay then we went through the motor status like uh, there is a lot of emf induced right so sorry there is this concept of back emf and a high starting current flows during the starting to prevent that you use a motor starter and then we went through dc motor efficiency calculations so we used whatever we learnt in the power flow then we came to dc generators so you had the separately excited dc generator which means that the field winding is excited separately all right so the terminal characteristics it had a good uh, so the terminal characteristics here will be between vt and il which are the output parameters of a generator so here you know that uh, the vt at the no load will be same as the ea at the no load so it would gradually fall down like this now for a shunt generator it was quite interesting so this is vt and this was the il or ia you can take anything here so it used to drop down like this but after a particular condition it would come down and it would come here like this. so it was a double valued function now the shunt generator we also saw the voltage build up in a shunt generator and while we discussed this concept we also went through the concepts of the critical resistance and the critical speed now this concepts were discussed to understand for example the voltage build up is not happening what might be the reason so the critical resistance should be always the resistance of the field winding should be always less than the critical resistance and the speed of the motor should be more than the critical speed for the voltage build up to happen therefore the definition of critical resistance is the maximum resistance uh, beyond which the generator will not excite and the critical speed definition is that the minimum speed below which the machine will not excite so you have to keep your rf or the value of speed uh, considering all these values then we discuss the series generator here so series generator had a very odd characteristics as well so you had your vt here and your il here so it had a linear portion like this and after that it dropped and i told you the armature reaction is made wantedly a little bit strong for applications so here you saw in the linear region it had an application as a booster generator so in the linear area it was used as a booster generator and this drooping area it was used for dc arc welding applications okay so after that we went through the cumulatively compound generators and differentially compound generators so the cumulatively compound generators again uh, it is using the best of both worlds so dc shunt generator and dc gen series generator you are getting the advantage here so basically based on the compounding so if this is a shunt characteristic the under compound generator would have a little bit better characteristics the flat compound generator the no load voltage and the full load voltage would exactly be the same all right and in over compound generator the full load voltage would be greater than the no load voltage so that is achieved due to the series winding all right and finally we discussed the differentially compound generator in which the windings are connected in magnetic opposition therefore it had a very bad characteristic even worse than the uh, shunt not even worse we cannot it had a very bad characteristic and it had a characteristic like this okay so as compared to a shunt generator you can see that it has a bad characteristic so that was the entire dc machinery fundamentals module for you not machinery fundamental the dc machines as such a total course is presented in front of you now the applications of dc generators etc are dwindling these days because of the advent of power electronics ac generators itself can be used to produce dc okay so the applications are quite limited nowadays because of the advent of the power electronics now the thing which i would like to tell here is that the entire course which is here uh, is whatever i know all right so whatever knowledge i am having i am putting it in front of you so this is a total and complete course now there are some videos if you see in the youtube as well some coaching institutes do provide certain courses but all those courses they might complete the machines in say one hour or uh, two hours like that but the machines does not get completed so fast so they expect that you see the course and uh, you pay some fees and you join their institutes but uh, this particular course there is nothing expected from you as such all i have all you have to have is an internet connection and uh, which can support 
the YouTube. That's it. So if you have an internet connection, you can watch all these lectures. And what I would recommend is that uh, you, if you don't have a good internet connection, whenever you go to say some uh, places, you are having access to internet. So you can offline all these videos. The YouTube app, there is an application, right? To offline all these videos, you can do that. And you can share this with people who might not have this access of internet. So you can uh, give it to them as well. I cannot go around providing uh, internet to everyone. That is the government's duty. And uh, what I strongly believe is that internet also is a very important part in this today's uh, world. And the government should do something to bring down internet costs. Not only bring down, give good uh, connection speeds to the consumers. So that is all with this particular DC machinery, DC machines uh, course as such. So some topics I might not have covered, but uh, with all this knowledge which you are going to gain from right one first lecture to the last lecture, if you see, that knowledge will be sufficient for you to understand any concepts in DC machine which you come across. So I also advise you don't only keep my lectures as a reference material. You have to read from textbooks as well. You have to try to have, have a habit of learning from textbooks and understanding them on your own also. All these materials are just uh, supplementary things which will help you achieve that goal ultimately. So in the next sessions, I think I am going to start with AC machinery fundamentals. So I have been getting a lot of requests regarding that to start with AC machines. That means synchronous motors and synchronous generators. So mostly I will be starting that only. But I need a little bit of time to arrange my notes and also to prepare a course flow. Uh, I am having a full-time job. So uh, whatever time I get after the office, I have to like spend for these videos. And of course, on weekends, I do a lot more. So I will be taking a little bit of time, maybe a week or two to start the course again on AC machinery fundamentals. So till that, it's me Varun. So if you have liked this video, please like, share and subscribe the channel. And also don't forget that there is an engineering circuit analysis module a course as well uh, in the same uh, channel. In the playlist, you can find that. So I sincerely thank all of you who have uh, supported me, in, in like uh, encouraged me with their valuable comments and doubts what they have asked. All these things uh, do motivate me a lot to push out more lectures like this. So I sincerely thank all of you who have watched these videos and uh, please uh, support me uh, in the future also. So it's me Varun signing off and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.